Hey y'all, Billy from Permapastures Farm. Okay, if you're new here, folks, we have a bunch of different things going on down here. You can see we got a little bit of corn coming up. We got beans, we got, I mean, you name it, tomatoes, it's all out here in the food forest. Now up that way is essentially our orchard. There's a difference between a food forest and an orchard. We're gonna talk about today what we have in this food forest. And we're gonna talk about how awesome it is to see it all come alive and see it, um, you know, grow the way it is. Now, essentially down in this food forest, we have exactly the same thing going at this point that we do in the orchard. Now, in between, let's say this apple right here and this black locust right here, which is here by design, anybody that's watched us knows that black locusts matter and they do. But what we're talking about today, folks, is where I am. We have, and you can't see it right now because they've all died back and we haven't gotten out here with all the things we have going on, we haven't gotten out here as quickly as we'd like. But right down through here are a bunch of potatoes. And in fact, Michelle had harvested a few out of here before. Now folks, this is all a giant experiment because we just put these wood chips down here not long ago. I'd say, I dare say months ago. And underneath here, this ground was denuded and depleted of just about everything. Just like all the other soil on this property that we've had to work on trying to replenish and rejuvenate, restore. That's what we do in permaculture, right? So what we have down here is a row of potatoes. They basically go this way down through here, all the way down to the very end. And over here, we use two different methods. Over here, we basically pulled out the wood mulch, took an auger on a battery drill, ran it down in there, dropped the seed potato and moved on. Now over here, we did something entirely different. Instead of removing the mulch first, we just ran the auger right down through the wood mulch, everything. So right down through here, all the way until the, until the back there is exactly the same thing with the potatoes. Now, we have a couple of choices on how we can go about this. And in fact, among ourselves, we're kind of debating on the best way to go about it. Michelle's basically saying, hey, let's harvest them, see what's up. If they're small, we'll just leave them. Leave them for worm food. William is saying, let's pull a patch and then leave the rest. And I'm kind of in the middle. I'm, I'm really, at the end of the day, I don't really have a dog in this hunt, so to speak. But let me just kind of point out something that we can do. Now, like right here, we have a daikon radish. And it was part of the good bug blend that we put out here. Now, the cool thing about these daikons, I'm, I'm not a big fan of eating them, although I will eat anything. But here's one thing that we could do with the potatoes. And I'm going to demonstrate with this radish that's coming out of the ground. I could go ahead, I could pull it out and harvest it, or I could go ahead, cut it at the base, and leave the rest of it as worm food. And folks, as I'm standing in front of you right now, if I just leave this here, I could come back months later, and you're going to see nothing but worm castings in there. That's right. So I could leave this in here to feed the worms. Potentially, maybe even do the same thing with the potatoes. Now this, I'm going to throw into the chicken tractor on steroids, let them work it over. And then plus whatever they don't get, guess what it's going to be? It's going to be compost. Okay, so here we are. You can't probably see it on camera right now, but these areas look distinctly different. The area where we ran the auger right down through the wood mulch and the area where we moved the wood mulch out of the way. So we don't know which one's going to be better. We haven't yanked any of them out except for over here. And Michelle was pleasantly surprised with what came out of there. Because frankly, folks, in this area, we weren't expecting anything. We were throwing everything at it. Like right here as I'm standing, I'm looking at marigolds, basil, strawberries, which seem to be doing exceedingly well. The corn, not so much, which I kind of expected anyway because of all this carbon out here. Um, but we are seeing a lot of things that are doing extremely well. Tomatoes seem to be doing fine. We got, um, oh shoot, you name it. We got it out here in this food forest area. So until these trees grow up and do what they're going to do, we're basically doing a centropic thing right down through the middle of here until they get shaded out and that we can't do it. So we're using every single space that we have as a growing medium to some extent or another. Now, ultimately, the goal is to move away from annuals out here to perennial systems. Permaculture 101, y'all, that's exactly what we want to do. But there's no reason if you want that you can't put annuals in here. So here we are, we're gonna go ahead, start digging these things up and we're gonna see what we got. But when it's all said and done, I'll talk about how we intend to deal with this area after we're done harvesting whatever it is we wanna harvest. 
So it's time to give these, give this, kind of chop it up halfway and we'll just throw it over there to the chicken tractor on steroids. Okay, so I was expecting, what I thought was gonna happen down here is we would get all these small potatoes like this. And so I was thinking we would just leave them if they were all pretty small because it's, it's clay, it's compact, and I wasn't expecting much. But we're get. I mean, they're not huge potatoes, but this is just, I, I mean, they're enough to eat for dinner a few nights. This is not at all what we expected, y'all. I mean, this, this is honestly not at all what we were expecting. I mean, this is the first tiny little row here. And um, like she said, this ground was so awful and denuded. In fact, this whole area, it's a matter of trying to rejuvenate. And we just put these chips down, these wood chips down in this area just, I mean, less than a year ago. So we really didn't expect much of anything. The corn over there isn't doing great by and large, but that's part of finding out. I mean, we knew that with this area being as messed up as it was and the ground so compacted that the worms didn't yet have time. But you look at already, look how much different the soil is. I mean, you know what I mean? You can see where the worms have exchanged. The cardboard is gone. Mm -hmm. The worms have absolutely exchanged the cardboard and the wood chips. They're turning this stuff in the soil. So it's working beautifully. And frankly, like she said, this is all we expected. I mean, we got a few of these little tiny ones here, but if this is any indication, what we have in just the first, this is just one row. We probably got 40 of them here. If this is any indication of what's out here, then I'm looking forward to this. Here's what we got so far out of this. I know it's kind of hard to see it. A bunch of red potatoes contrasted against a red bucket. So it's hard to see, but folks, honestly, we weren't expecting anything in terms of a harvest. Now, this is the area where we pulled the mulch back and then ran the auger, put it down. Now, keep in mind, there's also, what did we do with those little ones that were in there? We just left, if they were little, we just left them in the ground um, they might come back up next year. If they don't, they'll be, th we're, we'll just, they'll just build soil. Yeah, that's exactly the point here, y'all, because at the end of the day, we look at our food as a byproduct of making good soil. That's really what all of this is about. Your food is a byproduct of just good soil. All right, so we basically ran it all the way up to here with a pitchfork. Um, the rest of them, we're just gonna go ahead and leave it as an experiment, just to see what happens. Nothing wrong with that. Now, um, we got a little bit of everything out here, as you can see, but over to this row next to us, I'll kind of get over here so you have a basis of comparison and not step on the blueberries. It looks like, folks, let me just kind of address this because we've kind of been hit up about it before. Most people that come out here, they look at this and they just think it just looks like disorder. It looks like chaos. That's really not what it is. This is all by design. Everything you see here is by design, notwithstanding a few weeds <laughs> that we didn't intend to be in here. But you got everything from things in various stages of growth. Some of it really good, some of it maybe not so much. But this is a new area. And uh, it's gonna get better every year, just as we've proven up here with some of the other stuff. Maybe we can cover that in a future video. But in the area where we just kind of put down these wood chips, the fact that we're able to get anything is really astonishing. So here we are in this area where you don't see so many wood chips. I'm already right from the gate, out of the gates, y'all. I'm not really crazy about this method of just running it right down through there because I'm looking at bare soil on the surface. I don't know. Let's find out. Maybe these potatoes are okay. Maybe they're not. But we already got a pretty decent harvest from that little row there. Let's get in here, see what we got, and maybe we'll show you what we do with the really small ones.
All right, so some of these I'm just gonna put back. Like this got hit with the, the pitchfork, so I'm just gonna throw it back in. And this one's pretty small. So I'm just gonna leave this one in there. So we're just gonna leave the smaller ones just Maybe they'll come back next year. Um, if you watch the Back to Eden method, he does something similar to that. And also, if it doesn't come back next year, then we'll just, it's just building the soil. All right, y'all, there you have it. Two rows, and we got an entire bucket full of potatoes. Better still, in a place where we expected nothing. We really didn't. I mean, the truth is, this area was only prepared just... I think four months ago, we put cardboard down with the wood chips on top. And folks, it's, it's really amazing what happens when you just kind of put the things in place and then just back off. Because by and large, there's really no cardboard left. So that's a, that's a great barometer for us of just how alive our soil is. And that's really a good thing. So what we're going to do, we're, all this area, this soil that we've dis disturbed, all we're going to do is go back. Just gonna repeat the process again. We're gonna put down some cardboard, lay some more wood mulch down on top, and then we're just gonna let it sit. Then we're, when we're ready for it, we'll come back, put something in next year. Maybe later on. I mean, it's cool because we have options. And we got all this stuff down here to my left and right that's just waiting to do some really magical stuff, y'all. But also think about, Think about the areas where you could do this because I hear from a lot of people saying, well, I don't have land or I can't do this. I can't do that. You hear that? I just got an amen from that rooster down there. Think about other places where you could do this. I've talked about it before where if I wanted, folks, I could be planting sweet potatoes in very obvious places and most people would think it was invasive ivy. I could do the same thing with these potatoes. Maybe there's a park around you. Maybe there's some vacant space. Maybe you can get permission from a landowner that's not doing anything. There are places where you can do this stuff and, and you can do it in extraordinary abundance. So don't limit yourself to the options and the places you can do this. Like I said, this is in an area, a food forest or even an orchard setting because we got the same thing going up the hill. These are in places that most people would view as, as walking area or vacant spot or places that they can't possibly use, but you can. Just think outside the box just a little bit. A little side note. It seems like the greatest harvest for some reason was closest to the road. I don't know why, but you know what? That's part of doing this work. We're gonna find out why and what for. Okay, now further back, I wanna say you'll see an area that's not really disturbed behind me. That's area we're just gonna leave. We're gonna find out, we did that in both runs. This is the area where we ran the auger right down through it. Right next to me is the area where we moved it out of the way. Now it seems that the most productive area was the area where we moved the mulch out of the way but we did leave patches in both areas just to see what's going to happen are they going to volunteer and come back we don't know but we're going to find out that's part of doing this stuff y'all so i don't know why this is but every time i'm filming this rooster decides he's going to trip believe it or not y'all the most revolutionary thing you can do in these days is grow your own food and it's not that hard and it really doesn't take a whole lot of effort like Eric Sider was saying the other day on his channel, you know, if you lack, and I thought it was profound, if you lack the 15, 20 minutes it takes to go out there and flip the compost, then maybe you just don't want this bad enough because it's really not that bad of an investment of time. So think about the areas and the things you can do to expand your food supply, especially in this time of rising inflation. So remember folks, subscribe, tell your friends about us, hit that notification bell. So until next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. We'll see y'all next time.